research. Uh, we've talked about question here. So the other form of, forms of market, uh, primary market research are the focus group. I think that's the first one. Yeah. Focus group. When we're talking about focus group, here you try to gather a group of people. You use them as a sample to get information. So you, you pick a specific group of people, you use them as your sample. So they become your respondents. That is focus group. Do you understand what focus group is here? Gathering a certain group of people. Use them as you know, observe. You observe them. You you get response and feedback from them, with the, for the use of your products. That is focus group. That means you have you really specify this group of people. Maybe because you use your products, you want to get feedback from them. You pinpointed them. These are the people I want. We want to get feedback from. That is focus group. Do you understand focus group here? So the problem about focus group is that it doesn't really you know it doesn't give you generalization. They might not represent the views of the whole population. You know, you this is a class with 11 business, so we want a focus group on this. I might just use one, two, three to represent you. They might not represent the view, uh, the, uh, they might not represent the full view of what you guys are. Do you get focus group here? You pick them, they represent you, but they might not represent you fully. Because they are not you. Do you understand focus group? But when this is done, it's still primary research because we are getting information first hand. So aside quest aside questionnaire, focus group is also another way to gather information, especially qualitative information through market primary market research. Is it clear? The next one is face-to-face -face or telephone interview. When talk about face-to-face, -face, that means you have a physical contact with individuals in the streets. You ask questions from them and they give you feedback. That is face to face. They're, for telephone interview, that means you make a phone call through to your respondents by asking them questions. The problem about telephone interview is that some people don't like random calls. They won't even pick on no numbers. Yes or no? So if they don't pick, then it is not effective because the purpose is to get information from those people. Yes? How do they know the number? I said unknown. It's an unknown number. How does the company know the buyers? Sometimes you get don't you get messages randomly. SMS you get it. Calls come in randomly. Yeah, because there's always listen. There's always a database where information are being gathered. So these files, people have access to them. So one way or the other, you get random calls. Oh, sorry, it's a missed call. Oh, sorry, it's a wrong number. It happens, yes or no? So, because it's a business, they need to gather information. They could gather information. There's a network. You have Libiana, you have Madara. These are network companies. They could get these numbers from them. Whichever ways you could receive a random call or a random SMS. I think the point is clear. Clear, right? Good. So, for face to face, this is where you have a physical contact with people. You have conversation with them. So people, are, they don't have time. So when you are even approaching them, they just ignore. It happens, yes or no? Yes. It happens, yes or no? Yes. Great. So that's another form of primary market research. They talk, okay, now go to the benefits. What are the advantages of using primary market research? The first one I wrote, it gives details about and updated information needed by the business. Because you have used primary research. It means you have a project to research upon. Get the point here. In as much as you are carrying out the research, there is a purpose of carrying out that research. Yes or no? So based on the fact that you have a purpose, whatever information you get is important, useful for your, for your research. Unlike if you have to use someone else's research, which is secondary. We're going there anyway. For secondary research, this is information from someone which you want to use as your research. But well, the person, someone else's information that you're using, that's secondary. The problem there is that that individual who has carried out that research has a purpose. And her purpose or his purpose might not be the same as your purpose. It might have a, a relationship, but it might not be fully what you really needed. Do you understand what I'm talking about here? For primary research, whatever information you are gathering, it's information that is useful for the present situation of your company. Do we get it? 
Do we get it, please? Do we get it, please? Yes. yes. Great. The second one, it allows a business to have a complete advantage, a competitive advantage, as it's the first to gain the market's information. So you start having, you have edge over your competitors because you are the first to carry out that information or that research. It's a competitive market where other businesses are selling to, to the same customers that you want to sell to. But when you have that idea to gather information about certain product or service of yours, it means you are ahead of your competitors. And that will give you, you know, the benefit of understanding how your customers want, how your customers are, then you can quickly act before your competitors do. So market research allows you to have in-depth analysis about your customer before your competitors. Do we get it? Are, you, are we sure we get what I'm, what I'm saying here? With market research, you have first-hand information. Having a first-hand information means no one else has this information. At the present time, you are carrying out that research. Unlike secondary, that a lot of people has, a lot of people have information, have it with them. They have access to it. But this research you did, you are the only one that have access to it. That's why it's primary. That's an advantage for you. Yes. Everyone has secondary data. Why don't they use it? You said everyone has secondary data. Why don't they use it? Secondary data. So I said secondary data may not be applicable for certain reasons for certain businesses. But if they can, they use it. No, they can't. Some businesses, listen, the top point, I'm going to explain now. The top point is about some businesses, you can't even use secondary information because you need information of now. Example, like, uh, let's talk about the bakery. The bakery. If they are making a new, a new, style, a new type of bread that no others have made. So if they have to make up just like, okay, let's, okay, just like a bakery wanted to make a new kind of bread that they needed a primary information. They need to understand what people's view are about. This bread is not always available. Nobody has made this kind of bread. So what, how do you want to get second information for that? You're making a new product that no one has ever produced. That means there's no secondary information regarding that. So you need to make analysis out there. It has to go through primary research. Are you convinced or not? So I can explain for them. Not yet. No, this is still primary. The third advantage here is that some businesses, whatever they need to do, they can't find information available. They have to carry out this information. That's the point. So that means what I'm saying in essence is that. Some information you need to be the one to carry it out yourself, not others. Yeah, it's okay. Do you get the point I'm making here? Some businesses, they need to carry out their own information, not others. That's why we said secondary data may not be applicable for certain businesses. So in as much as you can't use secondary data, then it's ideal, it's ideal for you to use the primary research. It's an advantage because you don't even, it's not necessary you use it. You can't even use it. You don't have to use it. So the, your focus is on the primary research. This is not secondary. We are saying that secondary data might not be applicable for certain businesses. Some businesses that you're just coming up with, you might not have information on hand. So why do you, try, why do you want to waste your time finding the information that is not there? So strictly go on to the primary research. Do, we get it? do you get it now? Then, what are the drawbacks about primary research? Number one, it's expensive to carry out and time consuming. It takes time when you have to gather information first hand. You need to find the people. Finding the people, finding the right people, it's, it's, it takes time. And not only that, you need to spend money. You need people that knows how to carry out research. Do you get the point I'm making here? You need to find experts, researchers. You need to take your time to do that. Gathering people is not something you can easily do. Or you think gathering people is easy to do? Do you think gathering people is easy to do, to gather people, to put them together? No. Is it easy? No, sometimes. Sometimes. In Nasuja, it is sometimes. That I means it's not easy. So that means there's always a benefit of doubt there. So it means we have to seek, even for focus group, you need to find the right people. Do you think finding the right people is that easy to get? No. It takes time. So for the fact that it's unlike a secondary data that is already there, 
You just have to take the information and you are, go you are good to go. But this, you are the one making the research. So it, it's going to take your time. Do we understand the first drawback or disadvantage? Do we understand or not? Yes. yes. The second one. In case of focus group, the sample taking might not be a complete representation of the population. You might not be able to generalize. You can't tell me 10 out of 100 represents 100. It's difficult. Different people with different views. But we want to use 10 people out of the 100 to make our research. They might not fully represent the views of others. So that's the problem about primary research, focus group. Do we get it? Do we get it, please? And the last one, lack of expertise by researchers may bring about inaccurate information. If your research is not done by experts, that means if, you, if they are not skilled, they won't be giving you accurate results. So you need skilled researchers. You need experts to carry out the research. If not, the research will be inaccurate. Do we understand? It's just like a normal life. When you don't have the right people, the right skills to carry out the job. They're not going to do the job well. Are they going to do the job well? Yeah, if you don't have this, an example. So you need the right people with the right skills to carry out that job. Do we understand? And the last thing I didn't mention about primary research is the test marketing. Test marketing is another form of primary research. But for test marketing, the product is already done. Please be here. For test marketing, the product is already done. We just have to find a restricted area to check, to test the product, to get feedback before we finally introduce the product to customers. Do we understand test marketing here? Test marketing simply means the product is made, but it's not officially, it's not, we are not officially selling to the people, to the customer. So we make a restricted area, oh, we're going to Subjuma, that's a restricted area. We're going there to sell the product to get feedback before we finally launch the product into the market. That's test marketing. Do we understand test marketing? Do you get it or not? Yes, yes. Yes, Mira, do you get it? So it simply means we find a restricted area to sell the product, to gain feedback before finally launching the products to the public. It's still primary research, isn't it? Any question about primary research? So we're going to secondary research after now.